In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this unique little vase with a technique I learned in elementary school. So if you want to learn how to do it, well, then follow me. What's up, glue dots? I'm Elaine, the Midnight Crafter. And as you can see, I have a slightly different background this week. Um, this is because I am so desperately trying to hold on to summertime. <laughs> and I love the colors and the flowers and all the summertime stuff. But I do love color. I'm just not quite ready for fall color. So though that's what you all are asking for, I will do it, but I, I'm going to try and do it and combine it and do it my own way. So this video is a collaboration with Josie at Life at 50 and Beyond. And if you have not seen her channel, you need to go over and check it out. She is the DIY organizer maker queen and comes up with some absolutely incredibly creative ways to organize your stuff. So aside from that, she has some great DIY projects. So if you don't already know her channel, then you need to check it out. I will put a link for that down below, along with a link for my Facebook group that you can join, Midnight Crafter Glue Dots, where we do recreations of my projects that you've seen on my channel, and I love seeing what you guys do with them. And also down there, you will find a link to enter to win a bling keychain, little owl that I have, and I do that the first of every month. So head on over there and do that as well. Plenty of things to do this time, but you know that I would love if you give me a thumbs up if you like my videos, leave me a comment down below, and subscribe to my channel by hitting that little red subscribe box and the bell next to it. Then you'll know every time I upload a new video. Anyway, enough chit chat. We're gonna get to this project, so <laughs> let's do it. So this is gonna be a pretty easy project. Um, I remember doing this when I was a kid. And so I thought I would show it to you guys. So to start out, I'm using my glass jar. You can wash it with soap and water and dry it really, really well. Or what I like to do a lot of times just to get any extra oils off is give it a wiping down with just plain old rubbing alcohol and a cloth. Next thing we're gonna do is take our masking tape and I apologize for how utterly grungy this is, but <laughs> my husband had it buried. I thought I had some, but I couldn't find it. And so he dug some out of his uh, work area. So what we're just gonna be doing is better if you have the really wide masking tape because you get some better edges, but we're just gonna be tearing pieces kind of, um, you don't want them to be necessarily all perfect and whatever, but we're just gonna start sticking those on overlapping and covering our jar. Um, you so. want to make them sort of so that they're not necessarily straight, but you want to have those little curved, unusual kind of edges to them. And any different sizes, little, big, whatever, just put them all over to cover your jar. So as I said, I don't even remember what grade I was in when we did this project, but for some reason it came to me the other day and I thought it would be a fun one to show everybody how to make. So the bigger tape is better because then you don't have any of that straight edge. I don't really want any of the straight edge. That's why I'm kind of overlapping anywhere that does have a straight edge or putting it somewhere that it will get covered up as well. We're going to just go ahead and cover the whole jar this way. Did any of you do this project when you were kids? I'd be curious to know. Maybe I just had unusual teachers or something. I don't know. But you know how over the years projects come back around. All kind of artsy, craftsy things. Got it all covered up all over. And I tried my best to not leave any little gaps in there. You can definitely tell if you patch pieces over afterwards because they're not um, layered, but like, I don't know if you can tell over here, but you may be able to see it later. But anyway, now that we have that done, and I also left this top part undone because it's a little tricky with the ridges there, and I left the bottom because no one's gonna see it anyway. So the next thing we're gonna be doing is taking the shoe polish, which I got at Dollar Tree. 
oops, and it's in a reclosable bag that I was about to tear. <laughs> it already comes with a little cloth in it, and I don't know if you'll be able to find this exact one. Doesn't really matter. And of this, I'm actually going to be using the brown. It has brown and black. I'm just going to cut this cloth in half because it's pretty big, and then that way I can have one for the brown and one for the black. But for this, I'm going to be using the brown. Oh, I don't know. This brown's pretty light, so I may end up using the black. So just take the shoe polish and get it nice and on your rag, and then just start. Oh, this is very light. Okay. You know what? We're going to do the black. The black doesn't look all that dark either, so the black's probably a better option, or you can even mix the two. If you have shoe polish already at home, maybe it's better. I don't know, I haven't used shoe polish since I used to polish my dad's shoes for five cents each <laughs> when I was a kid. So you just rub it on and it's gonna start giving, getting stuck in the little crevices of the tape. So it's gonna start giving a really cool effect to this. Maybe I'll mix a little brown and black. I don't know. We're just going to give it a try here. You may be able to also do this with um, paint. I'm not sure. So if anybody wants to give it a try and let me know, that would be pretty cool. This almost gives the effect of the crackled glass. So what I was telling you before, you can kind of see where I put patches on afterwards because they're not overlapping. It's really not a big deal, but if you're like a, one of these weirdos like I am that is uh, really picky about stuff like that, it may bug you. Just saying. Now the more you go over it too with the more polish, shoe polish, the more it's going to define those little crevices. So it's up to you how much you want that to show. So I got it all on there and with the other cloth that I have, I'm going to kind of buff it off so that it doesn't stay um, oily and get all over everything. So just kind of wipe off the excess once you've got as much as you want on there because it will pretty much stay on those cracks. The next thing we're going to be doing after this is using the twine and putting that up on the top part. So you're going to first take and remove your little sign here. I know it's really cute as it is too, but you know how we crafters are. We have to take everything apart and make it into something else. <laughs> so I have my little sign here ready to go. And then I have my twine, my sign and my twine. And what we're going to be doing here is wrapping the twine around several times around our jar. It won't so, really need too much glue, so just something to hold it while you wrap. Up towards the top you might want to put just a bit of glue so that it doesn't slip. And when you have it how you want it, cut off your little excess piece and find the side you like the best because that's the side you're going to be putting your little sign on to. Take a little piece of twine and pass it through. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to tie it and glue it on and then create a little bow to put over that. Now if you want to leave it plain like this, you can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, if you want to add some type of a little bow, you can also do that. The way I do my bows for something like this, depending on how big you want the bow, you can either spread your fingers apart or keep them together and then just wrap around a few times. And then I just take another piece. Actually, I usually like to take a couple of pieces to tie it because I feel like I want the tail to be a little more than just one string. So I have my two strings here and my loop, and I'm just going to tie that around the center. So I'm going to trim the little tails on my bow, and because I didn't tie it in a knot, I'm going to put some glue on that back part there where it comes together so it won't slip undone. And I'm just going to cover up right where I put the knot. 
Okay, if you're enjoying my crafts, guys, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really does make a difference for my channel and I really, really appreciate it. Also, leaving me comments is fabulous and even better, join the Glue Dot family. All right, hang on, I'm gonna show you this all done.